This one comes to us from section 8.4, number 50. J, starting there in the second quadrant, K on the y-axis, L in the fourth quadrant, and M in the third. Now, you can do this many different ways. I'm just going to start with these two segments. I just pick these two. I can find the slope of JM. I can find the slope of KL. And what do you know? Well, we've got a match that tells us that these two lines, well, these two segments are on lines that are parallel. So there you go. That's going to help out a lot. Now we also know something else. We also know the distance formula, also known as the Pythagorean theorem. So that's going to tell me that I've got two segments that are both congruent and parallel. That makes a parallelogram. Get rid of some of this other, these other things there. So I've got a parallelogram right there. But there could be more. So let's keep going. I'm going to consider these other segments. Let me find the slope of JK. And right away, I see something here. I see that I've got a slope of negative 4. And right next to it, I have a slope of 1 fourth. Those two slopes are opposite reciprocals. So that means I have a right angle right here. You remember this, from chapter 3. So it is a parallelogram but I'm going to replace that. More specifically, it is a rectangle. Now, uh, let's take this a step further. Oh, and by the way, I didn't need to prove the other right angles because, remember, it's a parallelogram, and if I have a parallelogram with one right angle, that makes it a rectangle because one means they are all right angles. So, let's, uh, let's take it to the next step. And uh, where are we? Oh, yeah. How about the distance formula up here? If I do the distance formula here, I'm going to get radical 17, just like I got on the other sides. And I know that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent, so this side must also be radical 17. And now I've got a rectangle with four congruent sides. I have a square. Well, I've got a square. What's its perimeter? Let me see, I've got four radical 17s. Well, that's it. It's four radical 17, and we're done. Well, now we're doing a classification from section 8.5, number four. We're given these four points, we plotted them there, and we see they're all over the place, three of the four quadrants, and we draw on the sides. Now, this time, we're specifically looking for trapezoid, because it's pretty obvious, these sides, well, they are not going to be parallel. And um, so let's just check the blue and the green. That looks pretty feasible. And we're going to go old school here with the slope formula. And instead of drawing you those fun rise run arrows, and let's explore this by direct substitution. In general, I'll always choose, for example, on the blue, x1, y1 on the left, x2, y2 on the, on the right. When you do that, you will always have a positive denominator. Good practice, I find. And, I mean, it's, it's accurate either way, but it, you may save yourself some errors. So, substitution, calculation, 3 sevenths. For the green, substitution, calculation, 3 fifths. Hmm. Well, these two slopes are not the same. They're not the same. They're not parallel. Therefore, this figure can best be described as a quadrilateral, just plain quadrilateral, and therefore it is not a trapezoid. Now one more hunt for trapezoid, number six here in section 8.5, and I'm plotting those four given points right there, those four vertices, and I'm going to draw the sides in. And again, the black sides, no chance here. I mean, that one's a vertical, so that's an undefined slope, and this is a negative slope. So those two sides, the black sides don't merit a closer look. But the blue and the green do. And again, we'll use our slope formula. And I'm going to calculate. And again, I'm taking x1, y1, x2, y2 there. Simplify, and that is a slope of negative 1. So the blue slope, negative 1. I mean, you can see that from the picture, but let's um, 
you know, let's use all the tools we have. The green, again, and let's see, I'm taking the x1, y1 here, x2, y2 here, calculating that green slope. And I'm going to simplify that. And what do you know? Negative 1. Well, if I have two lines with the same slope, they are parallel. Therefore, this figure is a trapezoid. Now, this exercise comes from section 86, number 23. All points in the first quadrant. You've got P over here, 2, 7, Q, 6, 9, R, 9, 3, and down here, 5, 1 for S. So let's uh, use this color coding here by exploring the blue slopes. 2, 4, up 2 over 4. Well, those slopes look parallel to me. We've got two slopes that are equal. Lines are parallel. So we've got one pair of parallel lines. Let's go for 2. And down 6 over 3. Down 6 over 3. That sure looks like a slope of negative two. So looks like we've got both pairs of opposite sides are parallel and we know that that makes a parallelogram. Okay well that's pretty good we've got ourselves a parallelogram and the old question is well is there any more? Well let me move some of this out of the way we might need room here and um, for what's next I'm looking at this slope and this slope. Well, they meet here and they are opposite reciprocals. <clears throat> Excuse me. So chapter three, we remember something there. This figure now gets an upgrade. Yes, it's a parallelogram, but more specifically, it is a rectangle. We know it's got one right angle. That's all we need to prove. I mean, obviously you can, it's going to have four using the properties of a parallelogram, or we could go all the way around the figure saying opposite reciprocal, opposite reciprocal, and opposite reciprocal. Either way, you've got four right angles, and you've got a parallelogram with a right angle, so you've got a rectangle. And um, we, well, the only thing we could possibly check for now would be to see if this rectangle is also a square. And um, just by looking at it, I really don't think so. But we'll be diligent. In case, let's suppose it was close and we had to check. So maybe we do this. Maybe I would imagine these triangles here. When I imagine the triangles, that's the um, that's really the distance formula. See, because I, I can see this triangle like this, and I'm going to make a use the similar triangles, or I should say the reduced triangle principle, and I see that the sides of these triangles, or say the horizontal and vertical distance. Um, I can factor out some common factors. I've got two and four here. I've got three and six. Either way, when I look at these triangles, I've got square root of five. So I know that the sides are two radical five and three radical five, respectively. That tells me quite conclusively that these two sides are not congruent. So we're going to stay with rectangle. And, um, and if you didn't like that reduced triangle principle business, just, just do the old school Pythagorean theorem. And, um, and you'll see that they don't match. Well, again, we have um, all four points in the first quadrant. Exercise number 24. Let's try a different approach to first proving whether it's a parallelogram or not. We know it's quadrilateral. I'm going to use the distance formula. Now, I represent this with these triangles, these right triangles, uh, each of them represents the horizontal and vertical distance as legs, and therefore the hypotenuse of any of them would be the distance. Um, I got a good idea that these triangles are, oh, I'll just work them all out. Looks like all these opposite sides are congruent. I can visualize this this way. Look at that. How about this? These two triangles are congruent. Horizontal and vertical distance of 1 and 4 gives me a hypotenuse of radical 17. 6 squared and 1 squared, 37, radical 37 here. So, um, I guess this figure is a parallelogram because the opposite sides are congruent. And, um, 
At this point, we could test. Well, let's check for the next thing would be, well, is it a rectangle? And I'll check these the slopes here. I've got 1 fourth up 1 over 4 for this blue slope, or the slope containing this blue segment. And over here, down 6 over 1, negative 6. Negative 6 and 1 fourth. They are opposite, but they are not opposite reciprocals. So I would have to say that these lines are, are not perpendicular. Therefore, this figure is a parallelogram, and that's as far as we have to take it. We're done.